Earth mass M -E or M, where is the standard astronomical symbol for planet Earth is the unit of mass equal to that of Earth. The current best estimate for Earth mass is M equals 5.9722 times 1024 kg, with a standard uncertainty of 6 times 1020 kg relative uncertainty 10-4. It is equivalent to an average density of 5,515 kg m3. The Earth mass is a standard unit of mass in astronomy that is used to indicate the masses of other planets, including rocky terrestrial planets and exoplanets. One solar mass is close to 333,000 Earth masses. The Earth mass excludes the mass of the Moon. The mass of the Moon is about 1.2% of that of the Earth, so that the mass of the Earth plus Moon system is close to 6.0456 × 1024 kg. Most of the mass is accounted for by iron and oxygen c. 32% each, magnesium and silicon c. 15% each, calcium, aluminium and nickel c. 1.5% each. Precise measurement of the Earth mass is difficult, as it is equivalent to measuring the gravitational constant, which is the fundamental physical constant known with least accuracy, due to the relative weakness of the gravitational force. The mass of the Earth was first measured with any accuracy within about 20% of the correct value in the Shehalian experiment in the 1770s, and within 1% of the modern value in the Cavendish experiment of 1798. <laughs> Unit of mass in astronomy The mass of Earth is estimated to be m equals 5.9722 plus or minus 0 0.0006 times 10 24 k g Display style m underscore o plus equals 5.9722 pm 0.0006 times 10 carat 24 mathrm kilogram, which can be expressed in terms of solar mass as m equals 1 332. 946.0487 plus or minus 0 0.0007 m approximately equals 3.003 .003 times 10 minus 6 m Display style m underscore o plus equals frac one three hundred and thirty two nine hundred and forty six point zero four eight seven pm zero point zero 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 seven mathrm m underscore o dot approx three point zero zero three times ten carat minus six mathrm m underscore o dot The ratio of Earth mass to lunar mass has been measured to great accuracy. The current best estimate is M M L equals eighty one point three zero zero five six seven eight plus or minus zero point zero 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 two seven Display style m underscore o plus m underscore l equals eighty one point three zero zero five six seven eight pm zero point zero 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 two seven. The GM product for the Earth is called the geocentric gravitational constant and equals three 
398,600,441.8 plus or minus 0.8 times 106 cubic meters s minus 2. It is determined using laser-ranging data from Earth-orbiting satellites, such as LAGEOS-1. The GM product can also be calculated by observing the motion of the Moon or the period of a pendulum at various elevations. These methods are less precise than observations of artificial satellites. The relative uncertainty of the geocentric gravitational constant is just 2 times 10 minus 9, i.e. 50,000 times smaller than the relative uncertainty for M itself. M can be found out only by dividing the GM product by G, and G is known only to a relative uncertainty of 4.6 times 10 minus 5 2014 NIST recommended value, so M will have the same uncertainty at best. For this reason and others, astronomers prefer to use the UN reduced GM product, or mass ratios. Masses expressed in units of Earth mass or solar mass rather than mass in kilograms when referencing and comparing planetary objects. Topic: <laughs> Composition. Earth's density varies considerably between less than 2700 kg m3 in the upper crust to as much as 13000 kg m3 in the inner core. The Earth's core accounts for 15% of Earth's volume but more than 30% of the mass, the mantle for 84% of the volume and close to 70% of the mass, while the crust accounts for less than 1% of the mass. About 90% of the mass of the Earth is composed of the iron-nickel alloy iron in the core and the silicon dioxides and magnesium oxide in the mantle and crust. Minor contributions are from iron oxide 5%, aluminium oxide 3%, and calcium oxide 2%, besides numerous trace elements in elementary terms, iron and oxygen c. 32% each, magnesium and silicon c. 15% each, calcium, aluminium and nickel c. 1.5% each. Carbon accounts for 0.03%, water for 0.02%, and the atmosphere for about one part per million. History of measurement The mass of Earth is measured indirectly by determining other quantities such as Earth's density, gravity, or gravitational constant. The first measurement in the 1770s Shehalian experiment resulted in a value about 20% too low. The Cavendish experiment of 1798 found the correct value within 1%. Uncertainty was reduced to about 0.2% by the 1890s to 0.1% by 1930. The figure of the Earth has been known to better than four significant digits since the 1960s, WGS 66, so that since that time, the uncertainty of the Earth mass is determined essentially by the uncertainty in measuring the gravitational constant. Relative uncertainty was cited at 0.06% in the 1970s, and at 0.01% by the 2000s. The current relative uncertainty of 10-4 amounts to 6 times 1,020 kg in absolute terms, of the order of the mass of a minor planet 70% of the mass of Ceres. Early estimates 
Before the direct measurement of the gravitational constant, estimates of the Earth mass were limited to estimating Earth's mean density from observation of the crust and estimates on Earth's volume. Estimates on the volume of the Earth in the 17th century were based on a circumference estimate of 60 miles 97 km to the degree of latitude, corresponding to a radius of 5,500 km 86% of the Earth's actual radius of about 6,371 km, resulting in an estimated volume of about one-third smaller than the correct value, the average density of the Earth was not actually accurately known. Earth was assumed to consist either mostly of water Neptunism or mostly of igneous rock Plutonism, both suggesting average densities far too low, consistent with a total mass of the order of 1024 kg. Isaac Newton estimated, without access to reliable measurement, that the density of Earth would be five or six times as great as the density of water, which is surprisingly accurate the modern value is 5.515. Newton underestimated the Earth's volume by about 30%, so that his estimate would be roughly equivalent to 4.2 plus or minus 0.5 times 1024 kg. In the 18th century, knowledge of Newton's law of gravitation permitted indirect estimates on the mean density of the Earth, via estimates of what in modern terminology is known as the gravitational constant. Early estimates on the mean density of the Earth were made by observing the slight deflection of a pendulum near a mountain, as in the Shehalian experiment. Newton considered the experiment in principia, but pessimistically concluded that the effect would be too small to be measurable. An expedition from 1737 to 1740 by Pierre Bouguer and Charles Marie de la Condamine attempted to determine the density of Earth by measuring the period of a pendulum and therefore the strength of gravity as a function of elevation. The experiments were carried out in Ecuador and Peru, on Pichincha volcano and Mount Chimborazo. Bouguer wrote in a 1749 paper that they had been able to detect a deflection of eight seconds of arc. The accuracy was not enough for a definite estimate on the mean density of the Earth, but Bouguer stated that it was at least sufficient to prove that the Earth was not hollow. Topic: <laughs> Shehalian experiment. That a further attempt should be made on the experiment was proposed to the Royal Society in 1772 by Neville Maskelyne, astronomer royal. He suggested that the experiment would do honor to the nation where it was made, and proposed Wernside in Yorkshire, or the Blencathra Skiddaw Massif in Cumberland as suitable targets. The Royal Society formed the Committee of Attraction to consider the matter, appointing Maskelyne, Joseph Banks and Benjamin Franklin amongst its members. The committee dispatched the astronomer and surveyor Charles Mason to find a suitable mountain. After a lengthy search over the summer of 1773, Mason reported that the best candidate was Shehalian, a peak in the central Scottish Highlands. The mountain stood in isolation from any nearby hills, which would reduce their gravitational influence, and its symmetrical east-west ridge would simplify the calculations. Its steep northern and southern slopes would allow the experiment to be sighted close to its center of mass, maximizing the deflection effect. Neville Maskelyne, Charles Hutton and Reuben Burrow performed the experiment, completed by 1776. Hutton 1778 reported that the mean density of the Earth was estimated at 9.5 display style tfrac 9.5 that of Shehalian Mountain. 
This corresponds to a mean density about 4 one half higher than that of water, i.e., about 4.5 grams per cc, about 20% below the modern value, but still significantly larger than the mean density of normal rock, suggesting for the first time that the interior of the Earth might be substantially composed of metal. Hutton estimated this metallic portion to occupy some 2031sts or 65% of the diameter of the Earth, modern value 55%. With a value for the mean density of the Earth, Hutton was able to set some values to Jerome Lalande's planetary tables, which had previously only been able to express the densities of the major solar system objects in relative terms. Cavendish experiment The Henry Cavendish was the first to attempt to measure the gravitational attraction between two bodies directly in the laboratory. Earth's mass could be then found by combining two equations, Newton's second law, and Newton's law of universal gravitation. In modern notation, the mass of the Earth is derived from the gravitational constant and the mean Earth radius by m equals g m g equals g r two g Display style m underscore o plus equals frac g m underscore o plus g equals frac g r underscore o plus carrot two g, where little g g equals g m r two Display style g equals g frac m underscore o plus r underscore o plus carrot two. Cavendish found a mean density of 5.45 grams per cc, about one percent below the modern value. Topic: 19th century. While the mass of the Earth is implied by stating the Earth's radius and density, it was not usual to state the absolute mass explicitly. Prior to the introduction of scientific notation using powers of 10 in the later 19th century, because the absolute numbers would have been too awkward, Ritchie 1850 gives the mass of the Earth's atmosphere as 11 quintillion 456 quadrillion 688 trillion 186 billion 392 million 473 thousand pounds. 1, 1 times 1019 pounds equals 5.0 times 1018 kilograms, modern value is 5.15 times 1018 kilograms and states that, "...compared with the weight of the globe this mighty sum dwindles to insignificance." Absolute figures for the mass of the Earth are cited only beginning in the second half of the 19th century, mostly in popular rather than expert literature. An early such figure was given as 14 quadrillion pounds. 14 quadrillion and p fund 6.5 times 1024 kilograms in Massius 1859. Beckett 1871 cites the weight of the Earth as 5,842 quintillion tons, 5.936 times 1,024 kilograms. The mass of the Earth in gravitational measure is stated as. 9.81996 times 63,709,802. In the new volumes of the Encyclopaedia Britannica, volume 25, 1902, with a logarithm of Earth's mass, 
given as 3.98586 times 1014. This is the gravitational parameter in M3s-2, modern value 3.98600 times 1014, and not the absolute mass. Experiments involving pendulums continued to be performed in the first half of the 19th century. By the second half of the century, these were outperformed by repetitions of the Cavendish experiment, and the modern value of g and hence, of the Earth mass is still derived from high-precision repetitions of the Cavendish experiment. In 1821, Francesco Carlini determined a density value of ρ equals 4.39 g per cc through measurements made with pendulums in the Milan area. This value was refined in 1827 by Edward Sabine to 4.77 g per cc, and then in 1841 by Carlo Ignazio Giulio to 4.95 g per cc. On the other hand, George Biddle Airy sought to determine ρ by measuring the difference in the period of a pendulum between the surface and the bottom of a mine. The first tests took place in Cornwall between 1826 and 1828. The experiment was a failure due to a fire and a flood. Finally, in 1854, Airy got the value 6.6 .6 grams per cc by measurements in a coal mine in Harton, Sunderland. Airy's method assumed that the Earth had a spherical stratification. Later, in 1883, the experiments conducted by Robert von Sterneck (1839–1910) at different depths in mines of Saxony and Bohemia provided the average density values ρ between 5.0 and 6.3 g per cc. This led to the concept of isostasy, which limits the ability to accurately measure ρ, by either the deviation from vertical of a plumb line or using pendulums. Despite the little chance of an accurate estimate of the average density of the Earth in this way, Thomas Corwin Mendenhall in 1880 realized a gravimetry experiment in Tokyo and at the top of Mount Fuji. The result was ρ equals 5.77 grams per cc equals topic modern value equals the uncertainty in the modern value for the earth's mass has been entirely due to the uncertainty in the gravitational constant g since at least the 1960s g is notoriously difficult to measure and some high precision measurements during the 1980s to 2010s have yielded mutually exclusive results Sajarov 1969 based on the measurement of G by Hale and Krasinovsky 1942 cited a value of M equals 5.973 times 1024 kilograms relative uncertainty 5 times 10 minus 4 Accuracy has improved only slightly since then most modern measurements are repetitions of the Cavendish experiment, with results within standard uncertainty ranging between 6.672 and 6.676 times 10 minus 11 cubic meters kilogram minus 1 s minus 2 relative uncertainty 3 times 10 minus 4 in results reported since the 1980s, although the 2014 NIST recommended value is close to 6.674 times. 10 minus 11 cubic meters kilogram minus 1 s minus 2 with a relative uncertainty below 10 minus 4. The Astronomical Almanac Online as of 2016 recommends a standard uncertainty of 1 times 10 minus 4 for Earth mass, M5. 9722 6 times 1024 kilograms. Topic Variation Earth's mass is variable, subject to both gain and loss due to the accretion of micrometeorites and cosmic dust. 
and the loss of hydrogen and helium gas, respectively. The combined effect is a net loss of material, estimated at 5.5 times 107 kg 5.4 times 104 long tons per year. This amount is 10-17 of the total Earth mass. The 5.5 times 107 kg annual net loss is essentially due to 100,000 tons lost due to atmospheric escape, and an average of 45,000 tons gained from infalling dust and meteorites. This is well within the mass uncertainty of 0.01% 6 times 1,020 kg, so the estimated value of Earth's mass is unaffected by this factor. Mass loss is due to atmospheric escape of gases. About 95,000 tons of hydrogen per year 3 kg per second and 1,600 tons of helium per year are lost through atmospheric escape. The main factor in mass gain is in falling material, cosmic dust, meteors, etc. are the most significant contributors to Earth's increase in mass. The sum of material is estimated to be 37,000 to 78,000 tons annually, although this can vary significantly. To take an extreme example, the Chicxulub impactor, with a midpoint mass estimate of 2.3 times 1,017 kg, added 900 million times that annual dust fall amount to the Earth's mass in a single event. Additional changes in mass are due to the mass-energy equivalence principle, although these changes are relatively negligible. Mass loss due to the combination of nuclear fission and natural radioactive decay is estimated to amount to 16 tons per year, though these do not on their own change the total mass energy of the Earth. An additional loss due to spacecraft on escape trajectories has been estimated at 65 tons per year since the mid-20th century. Earth lost about 3,473 tons in the initial 53 years of the space age, but the trend is currently decreasing. See also <laughs> <laughs>